Here's how to turn antique woodcut imagery into sharp, editable Adobe Illustrator vector paths in just a few seconds. Begin by placing a pixel-based raster image of a woodcut illustration into Illustrator. Then open the Image Trace panel from the window menu. Selecting the image and using the black and white tracing preset button gets us a very nice woodcut look to the tracing result. It's so nice, I'm tempted to end the lesson here and just stick with this great woodcut. But that won't teach you what you need to know, so even if you share my temptation, let's keep working. By now you should be used to looking at the tracing result information section that communicates how many paths, anchors, and colors are in the tracing result. Just above that is all the controls you need to refine the number of paths and anchors in your tracing result. Click this little arrow to spin it down and expand the advanced section. Some of the controls in the advanced section might be disabled depending on your mode choice with different image trace objects. With this black and white drawing, you should have just about everything available for your use. The path slider adjusts the distance between the traced path and the original pixel-based shape. For a drawing like this, with such fine line work, you want the vector paths to hug the pixels pretty tightly. So set that number high. What I usually do is set it to 100% and then scale it back if needed. For the time being, I don't think that's needed. If anything, we need to pull out more detail, which we're going to do with the controls below. Corners determines how likely it is that a sharp bend in the vector path will become a corner and thus an anchor point. The closer you move the slider to less, the more Illustrator tries to use curves to represent shapes rather than inserting additional anchor points. For this drawing, 75% is about right. Feel free to play around with the slider or the number field, though, to get a feel for what it does. The noise slider is more about the original image than the tracing result. Noise is typically pixels you want to ignore or smooth away into neighboring pixels while tracing. This field sets the area in pixels to ignore while tracing. Higher values mean less noise results, so in a high resolution image, use a higher value like 30 to 50 pixels, while in a lower resolution image, which has fewer pixels overall, you should use a smaller number, such as 1 to 6 pixels. In the tower tracing, setting the noise value very high when tracing this image is going to make Illustrator consider more pixels in the original image as noise that shouldn't be traced or should be combined with adjacent paths. See? Now if we set noise to 1, we'll get a very different result. The very low value, 1 is the lowest you can set, tells Illustrator to trace just about everything, which is what we want here. The two method buttons control how tracing paths are allowed to interact. They won't have much effect on this black and white line drawing, so take a look at this comparison I prepared. The left button, abutting, creates cutout paths. It corresponds to the tracing result on the left. Paths aren't allowed to overlap, so where colors change, two paths will be drawn right up against one another, but knocking out of any adjacent or surrounding paths. The other method, the button and result on the right, is overlapping. It allows for stacking paths that might overlap other paths when Illustrator deems it necessary. This can result in a fewer number of paths and anchors, but also overlapping paths that might be more difficult to work with later on during manual adjustments. By the way, your eyes aren't deceiving you. The two tracing results are different, even though they shouldn't be. It's a quirk of Illustrator that two otherwise identical tracings might never be traced the same way twice, even by the same copy of Illustrator, even in the same document. These are both the same original image, cropped exactly the same. In fact, I just duplicated the first one to make the second, and both using exactly the low color preset. The only difference I introduced between them is the method, but before I even did that, Illustrator traced them with different colors and paths. Weird, huh? Let's go back to the tower drawing. You can enable Illustrator to render traced areas as fills and or strokes. 
The black and white preset, for instance, uses only fills without strokes, while the outline preset is reversed, strokes without fills, which is a very different result with the tower tracing. Let me undo that with Command Z or Control Z. You decide what you want Illustrator to draw for you, paths with fills, paths with strokes, or both. For this illustration, I think both fills and strokes will give us more detail, so I'll activate them both. Hmm, it makes the strokes a bit dark, but they won't be for too long. Let's press on. When strokes is activated, you can specify the maximum width allowed for a stroke. If the area to be traced is larger than the maximum stroke width, Illustrator will render the area as a fill or merely an outlined area if the fill option is disabled. Try setting the stroke field to 2 pixels and we'll regain some of the lightness and fine lines in the tracing result. Snap Curves to Lines tells Illustrator to replace slightly curved lines with straight lines. It also makes lines that are close to 0 or 90 degrees of rotation become 0 or 90 degrees, removing any slight rotation or angle. This is an excellent option to enable for scanned technical drawings or images of geometric shapes. Ignore White, which is useful when placing an image like this one that has a white background, will, when checked, not draw any white areas, saving you the trouble of having to manually delete those white areas to place the subject on a different color or background. Activate that with this drawing and the number of colors will drop from 2 to 1 and trace only the line work, not the empty space in between. It will also reduce the number of paths and anchors dramatically. Now you should have a very good tracing of the marginal tower illustration. Keep in mind that you might need to zoom in to see some details or correct screen artifacts like this apparently messy whirl or not work over here. Zooming in reveals that it's really not messy. It's just the way the computer draws the paths at that particular zoom level. Whether you're tracing woodcuts, scans of ancient clip art books, a client's logo, or a photograph, your new mastery of the advanced image trace controls will give you the best results possible when converting from raster to vector in Adobe Illustrator. Thank you for learning with me. Please like and subscribe for even more design tips and tutorials. Now go create something amazing.